Hello everyone, Rage is a fairy to here back again with some what's on deck. And first, I guess we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the whole COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, so far, it hasn't been too bad here where I am. In my province, I think there's been four people. All who traveled and got sick, but it is affecting Canada now and pretty much everywhere. Uh, I guess the biggest things to, you know, to say are don't panic, don't freak out, just be cautious, wash your hands, you know, don't be touching stuff and then touching your face, especially if you're out like in a store or whatever, don't touch everything and then pick your nose or whatever. Um, and you know, just, just be cautious about it. I mean, just take the same precautions you would for a flu or any other virus, because that's just what it is, it's a virus. And again, you know, the media has been making, you know, people panic a lot, but in reality, yeah, there's been a lot of people dying from it, but there's also a lot of people that died from the flu. And... You know, most people who have gotten this have been fine. <laughs> it's generally mild for a lot of people. But anyways, I'm no expert. I'm just throwing out my opinion. As for how is it affecting the playing card world, more importantly, I guess, so far, not so much. There's been some stuff, some Kickstarter stuff, like with the Iron Place project, and I think there might be another one that's had some delays um, due to stuff going on in Asia. I haven't heard of it affecting the uh, Chinese plants of Expo Playing Cards or MPC. I did reach out to MPC, Big Playing Cards. Well, on Twitter, never got a response. Um, I do know there, I said, I, I checked it out, there is an employee at a Cardamo Day plant in the UK, I forget where exactly, that does have the virus, but I don't know that it's affected production in any way. So far, you know, things seem to seem to be uh, keep on trucking with playing card production with no major issues regarding the virus. Again, I don't know how it's affecting the Chinese plants or has affected the Chinese plants. And again, same with WJPC. Anyway, let's get on to what is going on in the world of playing cards because we got lots to cover as you can see by the top here. First of all, we had Warrior One playing cards by Headless Kings. Neat. $16,600 Canadian gold. I really said that back. $16,600 Canadian dollar gold. Uh, it's currently at 350 bucks. Chances of funding. Eh. It must have just launched very recently if it's that low in funding. By Isan Ziafati. Second project. I don't know what the last project was. I'm curious. Uh, it looks pretty nice from the tuck case. I like Warrior Woman, why not? 15 bucks to need on the early bird. It's about 11 bucks US. Good price. Pretty nice bat design. I do like the armor on the faces. Nice custom court card. They're all female, as you would expect with a name like Warrior Woman. Uh, very nice. I'm liking what I'm seeing. It's, uh, especially, it, I guess, they think because it is Women's History Month, and it was just the, uh, International Women's Day the other day, printed by USPC, fulfilled by gamblers. There for some famous premium casino grade stock. All the cards are custom. Each court ace and joker will have original illustrations. Tuck will be made by gamblers. It will have gold, silver, and red foil and embossing with a standard seal. Really, a standard seal. Really. You do all this on a tuck box and you're just going to have a standard seal on it? That seems kind of weird and odd. Why have the seal at all? You know, Very nice tuck case though from the looks of it. Uh, nice artwork. Budika. Budisa. Celtic Queen. Ziga. Sayane. I'm assuming these are real people. Artisima. Very nice. Zone of Arc. Yep, definitely real people. This is definitely one that I'm interested in. I like it. I will give it a thumbs up. Beautiful aces. <sighs> mm. 
nice number cards, Tustin Pips and, and everything, but very nice looking, clean, classic looking, very usable, functional deck of cards. Beautiful mat design. I like it. I would definitely rate this one up there. Very well done. The Headless Kings on the Jokers, I like that. Very nice. Very nice deck. There's also a book and coin you can add on. I'm curious what their previous project was. And they are Canadian, so if they don't fulfill, if they fund, if they're from Vancouver, and you paid them a visit. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to do that. The last project, yeah, you, wow. Talk about a completely different look. The previous project was Jewelry Box. Fantastic deck of Magnificent Beetles, which failed. They had Beetles for court guards, uh, kind of a really simple, horrible back design. And now you get this beautiful deck. It's like a complete 360. You know, you go from meh to basically. I like it. I like this new one. Is it going to fund? Time will tell, I guess. Get out there and, you know, play. It's definitely probably the nicest deck this week on Kickstarter. Moving on. Um, eventually. <laughs> Fournclaw Manor. Second illustrated monster family poker deck and an art book by, I believe it was Steve Ellis. It is nearly funded. I mean, like, it is right there. <laughs> 5938 out of a $6,000 goal. It's not a question if it's going to fund. It's just a matter of when, really. Probably today or tomorrow. Um, it's a second project. He's done another Thorn Claw Manor deck. I never got him. It was never, never got that one. It's never really my cup of tea. It's still not really my cup of tea. I appreciate the effort put into it. I got nothing. You know, I'm not going to. It's a pricey deck. 20 bucks US for one deck. New. <laughs> not at that price. It, it's no more than a $15 deck. Ten dollar deck. Um, I mean, again, A for effort. Everything's completely custom. The number cards are fairly standard, but they've changed the, the background of the cards. They're not white, and they've added borders for some reason. Okay. <laughs> you can get the original deck as well for twenty bucks if you missed out. What I don't like, I mean, they're selling a lot of art, but I'm not seeing a lot of information or advertising on who's printing it. I'm also not seeing a lot of information or a lot of artwork on the deck. I mean, I'm seeing some artwork. I could see it's a complete custom deck. I can see what the style of the court cards are. I can kind of see the back design. It's kind of meh. You know, the number cards are fairly standard. I'm not seeing an ace of spades. I'm not sure who's printing it, so. You know, there's all that. It's kind of pricey. Oh, look at that. It's funded. There you go. There's your win. It is now funded. $8,340 Canadian goal. It's now funded. There's your win. It just happened. <laughs> we just saw history in the making. A project is funded live on my video. <laughs> It's never happened before, I don't think. First time ever. Project has funded live on video. Anyway, thought I would look at this. Eagle playing cards. I go. Eagle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> By Richard Dawson. The game show host? Isn't that the guy's name? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure he died. I passed away quite some time ago. These are, honestly, they have cardistry in mind. They are not very standard at all. I see a Joker. I see some cards with J's on it. There's no defined suit, but I do see numbers and letters. So it's trying to be a poker deck. It's trying to be a card deck. It's got numbers and letters. It's got the aces, the jacks, etc., etc. The number cards, but it has no defined suits that I can tell. It's got a lot of Japanese information. Very cardistry esque. The back design. It's horribly one way. <laughs> I appreciate the effort, but it's definitely not for me and probably not for most of you. But you can see it is a playing card deck. It's just not very usable. Unless you read Japanese. <laughs> Moving on. I just thought we would look at that one <laughs> very quickly. Moving on. Aha! There we go. Art 
Angel, Legendary Playing Cards. Currently at $3,400 out of a $22,500 goal Canadian. I I did not get to check where that last one was at funding wise. It doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice enough back design, three different colors apparently, red, blue, black, your kind of standard colors, traditional colors, the playing cards. It's probably not going to find it's a pretty big goal, and support so far is kind of lacking. It's $20 for one blue deck, ah, or a Canadian deck, $30 for the mythical edition, which I assume is the black deck, on the early bird. I assume, I don't necessarily know, $35 Canadian for that regular deck, which it doesn't even say what that works out to American, does it? Doesn't. So this is his original idea, and this is the final artwork. You know, I didn't hate the original idea that much to begin with, but it's pretty nice back design. It reminds me a little bit I think if I'm wrong, reminds me a little bit of the Prime Poker Cards, which you can see with your on my channel, as long as it hasn't somehow disappeared from my channel. But it reminds me a little bit, it's just a little bit, I think, of Prime Poker Cards. I can see, ah, it's kind of a, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same idea with angels on the back design, but it's totally different. By the way, those are pretty awesome decks if you haven't checked them out before. It's definitely worth having a look at. Um, it does have a, a similar feel to some decks I've seen printed by USBC. This is designed by Denny Hoxono. Well, guys, if I butcher that. They have stretch goals for epic embossing and hot foil stamping, which they're highly unlikely to hit. And uh, same with the red ones. And the blue ones is going to have the embossing and foil, which is why. Or foil is a stretch goal, but it is going to be epically embossed um, and whatnot. They're going to have extra details and extra color accents as well on that one once they hit 75% funding. So he's not even going to bother until he gets 75% funding. You know, it's a pretty nice bat design. Pretty interesting. Mythical. Uh, interesting artwork on the court cards. There's just sketches though. Um, personally, I would love to see, especially for what they're asking for, a lot more artwork. I, I don't like the idea of vacuum projects that are half done because then you don't know if the creator is going to walk out on it afterwards. It's also really pricey <laughs> for what it is um, and for what we've seen so far, which isn't much. So yeah, best of luck, but I'll wait until later for sure on that one. Moving on, relaunch of the Bridge House playing cards. I don't know why, but why not? It did fund last time. I don't think it's going to fund this time. It's going at $954 out of a $7,500 goal. It's okay. It's a nice enough back design. It added a detail the light from the lighthouse for on the border for cardistry, I guess. How exciting. 10 bucks for one deck is a good price. It's basically fairly standard. Uh, an okay you know, ace of spades that fits the theme. But everything is basically standard, and the tough case is not very exciting. <laughs> um, like maybe do some embossing on the tough case on the lighthouse, and have that light beam be silver foil or something. You know, <laughs> I don't know, just just a font. You know, make it a little bit more glamorous. We don't need a V one on the back. To indicate that it's a V1 because it probably won't be a V1 or a V2 at this rate. Uh, I mean, it's okay, get an okay deck. I don't have anything against it. I see 
I see other guys have gotten Dex review. I did not. Where's my deck? Like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm the king of cards. <laughs> you know, I should be the one doing the review. Moving on. That's all I have to say about that one. We have the unknown playing cards, Ocean Edition. $2,100 right now and funding at under the $10,000 goal. I don't know if it's going to fund. I really don't think that it will. I mean, it's, it doesn't really, you know, matter to me that much. It's not a very good deck. Card Cosmos is greater. There's a story to it. It's about the past, present, and future. I mean, really? He spent the last 11 months working on this. Coming up with the design, improving it, investing money in one of the prototypes. And this is apparently super exciting, but also exhausting for him. Exhausting. This. This was exhausting. 11 euros, by the way. Which is 18 bucks Canadian for one deck. New. <laughs> but you get a sticker. Be put to buy Carter Moon Day on a slide line. Stock. B9 Finis. <sighs> 11 months for this. It's a back design. That's a UN. The real UN, the United Nations, said, you know, flag it for a copyright. <laughs> That's it. That's this whole design. It's a line and a U, which is also an N. And there's also this little weird corner detail, whatever the hell that is. I've seen a little black squiggle in the corners. Um... Which could be a name or something. Maybe it says unknown. I'm not sure. These are the standard USB-C faces. These are the new unknown faces. What's new about them? Not much. They're just recolored. I absolutely dislike it when creators go, Hey, look. We redesigned the court cards. No, you didn't. They're just standard. Or in many cases, they're just missing pips. This is just recolored. This is not... New and exciting. It's nothing. It's standard faces. Stop advertising it as something new because it's not. Or stop advertising it as completely custom or custom court cards like a lot of people do because they're not. They're just standard court cards. It's. And they're not even that customized. You can find lots of decks with those colors on them, basically. New and improved. Face designed by Daniel Snyder and Justin Keller. Daniel Snyder, really? There's the Ace of Spades. It's okay. It's just a U, but it looks kind of nice. Probably the nicest thing on this whole deck. And then the joke is they just say unknown on him or something. And then there's an ad card because, or Ocean card as they call it, because why not? It's, you know, when I look at the tuck case with the name across the front and that design, it feels to me like they're trying to copy the Fontaine deck. The side of the box with the U on there reminds me of another deck. I forget what it's called, but it was from Bomb Magic. They had it on there. It has a similar design along the side, I think. I forget what it's called, though. But um, a lot of pictures, a lot of videos on this one. But really, it's... It's unknown because nobody's ever going to know it because it's pretty horrible. Moving on. That's all I got to say about that one, which is a lot. Ah. This one had so much potential and then it just fell apart for me. Problems I have. For one, the index should be in the corner, not way down where it is. Two, why the hell is the Ace of Spades index in the opposite corners? Just horrible. Says it's, it's the columns of Jadiman, Jadiminas, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it unfortunately. Historic point comes from 1930 from Lithuania. Okay, that's cool. And if that's what they did, that's cool. Uh, I'm not going to mock that. Or, you know, complain about that. It's, you know, it's almost half, it's basically half funded. So that's cool. Um, you know, I, I don't hate it. I like the vintage style. I like the court cards. 
It's 19 bucks Canadian for one deck. I just don't like what the index is on. <laughs> you know, it just it bugs me a little bit. But I do like the deck. It's going to be printed by USB-C. That's all by Gamblers. Nice enough top case. Nice enough back design. Really thick borders, it feels like. But pretty nice back design. And, you know, cool zokers. And yeah, so that is that. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. I mean, it might fund, it might not at this rate. <laughs> how many days are left? 25. It's been a long time. Moving on, we got the Virginie Winnie collection <laughs> by Yoki Games. This is the second project. It's nearly half funded, 3500 almost 3600 out of an $8,500 Canadian gold. It's got the same style tuckers uh, box with two decks as the previous project. You know, it, that design's okay if you like that sort of thing. One way design, very, you know, artistic nature setting. Apparently, it's the third project. Um, 10 pounds for the twin deck is pretty nice price. And the, the aces, you know. I would prefer just a more classic ace of spades, not only floral elements. And the jokers, you know, they're fine. And you got these aces and everything, it looks nice. But then you got standard four cards, which are just eh, it doesn't really fit. Also, the aces have four indexes, while the rest of the cards apparently only have standard indexes. You know, I appreciate the you know the thought and everything, but if you're gonna do Whatever you're doing, this is the previous one, which is kind of weird, but interesting at the same time. They had the same style thing going on with the faces, too, I believe. Um, I just prefer, you know, all the indexes to be the same in the deck of cards. <laughs> um, and it'll be some kind of, you know, over, overarching kind of theme or design or style. Not not like this where it feels like they've thrown in some jokers and aces into a deck of cards and they don't look like they fit in that deck of cards. Anyway, but best of luck to them. They're, they're sort of fun. One more. This is from my buddy. Uh, Ace Collectible Cards. It's uh, getting there. It's at $4,000 out of an $8,500 goal. The High Lord Second Born Playing Cards Volume 2 Fantasy Series. Volume 2 of the series. I still need to re review the first one, unfortunately. <laughs> I do believe. Nice enough artwork. You know, there's two versions, as you can see a standard one and a limited edition one, which is mostly a different tuck case, as far as I can tell, as far as I can recall, from the other one I got. But they're pretty nice. <laughs> Completely custom. Nice enough bat design. I really don't think it needs to say volume 2 on there. It seems unnecessary. But I guess you needed something on there. On that ribbon. Because you first born. There are some differences in the limited edition. The tuck case, numbered seal, 500 only. Uh, special suit color backgrounds, different Joker artwork. And that's that. Uh, 10 pounds for one deck. Yeah, I think I mentioned that. It's not too bad. The limited edition is 12 pounds. Pretty good price for a limited edition deck, I would say. Really good. So, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that looks like a 21 bucks Canadian store. It's an okay price. Yeah, it's worth checking out, I guess, if you like it. Moving on, there is a new deck from Gemini Decks. No, I don't want the newsletter. It is a new version of the Gemini Casino deck, which is now sold out. Gemini Casino 1975, there's 1100. 
as you can see and you know it's basically just another variation of the casino deck I do wonder oh wow they had 80 that had no seals special edition so he probably charged a buck ton for those 17 bucks US for one deck because it has no seal and there's only how many was there 80 that have no seal okay <laughs> um, standard faces it's just a casino deck I mean I don't hate the back design maybe it's a bit too angled the Gemini casino look um, you know at least it did something a little bit different However, please don't reprint this in eight different colors. Moving on, 311 had a couple of new releases. The first one is one that I mentioned before, I believe, the Hollywood Roosevelt. That somebody I saw it on the uh, United Cardist. People were selling them for like 50 bucks on eBay. Well, now you can get them for 10 bucks. <laughs> Pretty nice. Obviously, it's for the Hollywood Roosevelt. Nice Ace of Spades. Pretty interesting, very nice tuck edge for us. Nice custom court cards. The back designs, it's nice, it's kind of simple. That's the logo. Cool dokers. And yeah, pretty nice, good price. I mean, how can you go wrong with a deck like this? This is a hotel, by the way, that's been around since 1927. Apparently, it's had many people stay there, like Marilyn Monroe. Charlie Chaplin and Clark Gable, they named a few. I wonder if it's ever been featured in any movie. Probably. <laughs> um, they have a magic soul that's there, and this was produced with that, and that's where people were getting it before 311 released it. Of course, printed on the 311 stock and finishes. Um, it's a good price. I mean, you look at decks. Like this with foil and embossing on the top case and custom artwork on eBay, and they're going for like 20 bucks or whatever. And this is half the price, basically. Can't go wrong with that. But there is one more new deck they released. It's a second edition of the product Red, which is for AIDS benefits. It's for an AIDS benefit, so um, money. Wow. Leading. Cause of death among young women worldwide. Women, specifically. Okay, but anyways, money from this does go towards the cause, which is awesome. So I recommend buying it just for that. Of course, the original version was just a NOC deck. This one has a new back design, which has hearts on it and a globe, and it's pretty nice, simple. A nice, uh, a nice embossed tuck case as well. A custom seal. And, uh, but no jokes. Instead of jokers. The Ace of Spades is red. It's the same faces as the last. Uh, it's the same faces as the previous deck. The back design, the, the, sorry, the tuck case is also more or less the same, except for this is different. And um, the back design is obviously different. But it's for a good cause. If you didn't get the original ones, they might still be available. I'm not sure. But it's definitely worth getting it. Red has raised over $650 million for uh, the fight against AIDS, which is awesome. That being said, I have to question all this fundraising for medical stuff because all the millions and hundreds of millions. That people have donated over the years, and that celebrities have donated, and we have no cures for a lot of these diseases yet, like AIDS or cancer. I mean, it boggles my mind how we don't, with all this money going into research, have these cures. And in many ways, I think it's just down to the pharmaceuticals wanting to pump out drugs to you so they can make money and holding, withholding cures different diseases and I don't think that's acceptable. 400 days of one with HIV every day, that's ridiculous. That's not happening. Um, anyway, that being said, I do believe nowadays AIDS is fairly manageable, at least in most developed nations. And it's not new. It's not as bad as it was in like say the 70s or 80s. 
where you had a short lifespan and it wasn't good. But obviously now it's you got better chances. Anyway, for playing card decks.com, I should just place an order with them. They have a few new things to mention. First of all, they have these 666 playing cards from Ripple Suffle, which I actually really like. The tuck cases are pretty simple. Um, the back design's really nice, even if it's kind of demonic, kind of classic looking, red and blue. Nice enough jokers, nice ace of spades. Hmm. Uh, it's a shame they recolored the faces on the blue deck, the blue for hearts and diamonds. Pretty nice. And also, very nice, beautiful custom artwork. Reminds me of the Joker and Thief style decks a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah, um, I like it. Very nice, beautiful tuck cases. Despite the 666. Well worth checking out, I think. Printed by Carter Mundi, I believe. Which is uh, designed by PNKMGC. <laughs> um, I believe they're put by Carter Munde and the first ones they did with Carter Munde. Could be wrong, I'm not seeing any information on that. Um, then there is these, the Eclipse comic playing cards, which were obviously released through his club, first and foremost. Uh, they are reproductions. In red and blue, he previously had a green one, which I believe he sent to me, or did I order it? I don't recall, but I do have it. I still need to review it. I may as well hold off and wait for these ones. <laughs> um, very nice, simple, classic looking back designs. Uh, obviously, the reproductions are very vintage. These ones have no indexes, as you can see, they're feral style. I believe the green one that I got does have indexes. Uh, we can look at that actually. These are put by MPC. There's 500 of each. I just wanted to. Oh, I'm touching myself. Crap. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not infected. At least, not to my knowledge. I mean. I haven't traveled anywhere. I pretty much go to work and come home, that's it, for the most part. <laughs> um, anyway, is this going to load up? Please. Oh, please. There it is. Now it says that these ones are reproductions. It says that the original green one, which is still available, is a prototype. And it was available back in October of last year. So, I guess these are the, the decks he's going with. And he's not going to be doing any Kickstarter project. I'm not sure. The original prototype one in green has nine left by the way if you missed out you want to get them now's your chance to get them before they run out they were printed on the smooth ivory finish on european stock by npc nice back design in green that's the only to review of course and these ones also did not have indexes that's what i wanted to see more than anything it's the same Feral style index less transformation style artwork. Also 500 printed and it was by Azure Red Ox. These ones, again 500 of each, they are on a the beta linen finish from MPC on a M31 Cena quality stock, so it's going to be good quality. I assume this is, you know, they're not going to be doing a Kickstarter. If this isn't a prototype, especially since it doesn't say it's a prototype. Uh, very nice, though. I like them. I can't wait to check these ones out as well. Same back design. You know, I might have a review on this 
have you said something that is the same, but that hasn't happened. <laughs> Moving on. We have Super Bees V2, apparently, uh, from Wooznus, printed by Carter Munde, if I haven't mentioned it. Um, and of course, these also go towards a good cause. 10% of the profits have been promised towards IUCN and local bee charities. But save the bees. You know, they've raised over $30,000 so far. These ones are printed by Cardamundi on a B9 stock from Finis. Or B9 Finis. Um, it does have some metallic inks in gold. And same artwork uh, as I can recall from the original one. I am going to pick this one up. The review will be coming. It's not my favorite design from Illusions, but it's, it's for a good cause. That being said, oddly enough, I have not seen these on the uh, Illusionist website, unless it's their latest mystery deck. I don't know, but it does say it's a 2020 release. Speaking of Illusionist, we also have Republic number 3, Artist Edition. I got not too long ago from Illusionist, and I ordered the LA Edition, the Lost Angeles Edition. I did not know there was another one, this one, the Artist Edition, which, as far as I can tell, looks very similar in the faces. Which, I mean, the other one is basically very similar in the faces to previous decks. And same back design, except that this one looks like it is in black. That's the main difference that I can tell. And then it says Artist Edition. So, there's that. And again, I didn't see these at Illusions website. Luxury Press B7 stock by Cardamunde in black. Moving on to Murphy's. A um, couple of new things to mention here. Including Jackson Robbins VHS deck and the Ristretto Turkey Roast. Ristretto is a coffee themed deck. I believe it's from, I forget who was producer really, but I believe they're printed by USBC. Uh, the back design is designed to look like coffee stains. It's nice enough. Um, interesting looking tuck case. You can see in Boston, actually I don't think that is USBC, that's Cardamunde, it's got to be Cardamunde. That embossing, I imagine, but you can definitely see the embossing. Very close up image, definitely not a USB C embossing. And, um, oh, yeah, court card looks pretty nice. Reminds me of uh, artwork from Hassan Bonefell's decks in the past. So, um, if that's what the court cards look like, thumbs up for that. But if that's a custom deck, I don't recall if the original was the original Ristretto deck was custom. I do have it, and I have a review on my channel somewhere. And, and then there's a VHS by Jackson Robinson. Very nice. <laughs> is that the back design, or is that just... I'm curious. I think that's the back design. I don't know for sure. It is one way that is a back design, which is cool. It's fine. I like it. As a joke, it's very simple. Number cards, pretty cool. They have a border on the faces for some reason. And the court cards, they got that kind of VHS tracking glitchiness. And I, I know all about it. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know why 1982, I guess that's when VHS started. But I, you know, grew up in the 80s and 90s. In the 90s, we got a VACR for the first time ever. And you know, it was our first experience with VHS. And we had dozens of VHS tapes. We would always be recording. There were some TV shows we might record episodes of. There was a lot of movies we recorded of. And it was great. Now, I don't know why my parents decided to get a VCR. They don't usually go out and get stuff like that. 
Uh, I mean, it's not like we have a PVR or anything like that in the house. Um, once upon a time, we did when for a while when we got a deal from the cable company, but no more. But um, you know, it's not like it's not like them. I don't know if they just got it from recommendations from relatives or whatever. They get, they got one. My dad, of course, you know, he had to get a deal on it, but um. <laughs> Which he did. But yeah, I grew up with VCRs and VHSs, so I'm very familiar with them and that technology. And I've also kind of grown up through the DVD age, now with the Blu ray, and actually, you know, of course, digital streaming now. So I've been through a lot of ages. And hell, back when I was a kid, way back when, quite some time ago, I remember when I was in elementary, in like grade one, we were watching film reels. In class. That's how old I am. That's how far back I go. Back to the 80s when I was in school. We were watching film. Film reels in class on the old projectors. Yeah, so I've been through all those pages of video. Of course, schools are always behind in technology, it seems. I mean, I remember 10 years ago. When I was in school taking carpentry, we were still watching VHS videos. And obviously DVDs were out there. Anyway, now I'm just babbling. That is what's going on this week in the world of playing cards. It's going on. As far as everything I've seen, I guess I could check out the bicycle website. Um. Or maybe we won't. <laughs> maybe we won't. Maybe we won't. Anyway. That is it for now. I don't think there's anything new here. We will find out eventually. It's just how my computer is slow when I'm recording. There's nothing new. There's some terrible deck which we've mentioned before. So that is it. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Totally radical.